My name is Tobias Lindholm. I am the director of The Good Nurse. At this point in the movie, our main character, Amy Lochran, Jessica Chastain as Amy, has realized that her very good friend, Charlie, played by Eddie Redmayne, has been killing patients at not only the hospital they have worked at together, but several hospitals in the past. She has set up a lunch to meet her friend. She's wired in the scene so the police can listen in. And she wants to try to get him to confess or at least say a little too much so that they would have a reason to arrest him. Very early on in the development of the screenplay together with the writer Christy wilson Cairns, we had access to a recording of the real meeting, the real conversation between Amy and Charlie that was done in a diner. And listening into that, it was really, really bad quality. So there was a lot of questions, what was actually said. Uh, but nevertheless, you could still feel the tension. And most of all, what I heard was that because the mic was taped to uh, Amy's body very close to her heart, you could hear the quiet sound of her heart beating. Hmm. So can I get you guys something to drink? Uh, I'll get a nice tea, please. I will just have water. Which was scary because the real Amy had a heart condition. So we knew that if her heart would raise too much, she was in the high risk of having a heart attack. Um, so the idea of how do we implement the heart condition in this scene with a mic and some police officers listening in was one of the first conceptual ideas that we started to work with. Uh, don't you know, I'll get a, I'll get a cheeseburger. Me too. All right. The interesting thing about the diner scene as an institution or as a setup is that there are so many given rules in a diner. You will have two people that will meet. One will probably be there before the other. There will always be a waiter or a waitress. Um, there will be a menu card. There will be, what do you drink? What do you eat? And the interesting part of this scene was when I showed it to my 11-year-old son, he said, oh, interesting, she orders the same as him. And I said, why do you think that is? And he said, I guess she's not there to eat. And then at the same time, the diner is a public place, so you can't really control it, which for a character with a very specific want and need can be problematic. You know, I don't want to talk about Parkfield. It's... Why not? She's extremely good at keeping the emotions inside and playing it as if she's hiding something instead of showing it. Is it because what they're saying is true? Because, you know, um, I wouldn't care if you did those things. We opened it in a wide shot so that we slowly could get closer and closer into the characters. And as we get into the climax of the scene where she's really trying to push him to see if she can get him to confess or at least uh, say a little too much, we almost squeeze them both in these square frames where more than half of the frame is just the back of the opposite person's chair. And then we only have Jessica's face or Eddie's face in those close-ups. And the idea behind that was basically to make it as claustrophobic as possible and be able to zoom in on Eddie so that he couldn't escape. And yet he managed to lean in so that his face disappears in what is now black of the, of, of the screen. And then when he comes back, he has changed. I didn't tell you I got permission to see my cross. And, and that was a coincidence. We created the space for Eddie to stay in with that little square in the frame, but he created the escape and then the returning where he had transformed. I want to talk about Parkfield. I want to talk about what you did.
I gotta get out. Starting a new job. Can't be late, so. But I'll call soon. He's leaving you guys. He's leaving. He's walking. All right now. 